Never. Soon this will all be a whole new experience again. Never ever the same. <coughs> ever the Never same. Never what? Never exactly the no, same. No, it can't be. It That's can't it. Be. You're going to edit it. Action, Edmund. Take your card. Uh, how about realistic <laughs> illusion? Isn't that what we live? Ah. Uh, Look at it. Realistic illusion. That's how we live our lives. Go for it. Pick a card, any card. Alright, let's see. Make sure it's the right way around. I am the future past. It's show business. That's what show business is. It's realistic illusion. <laughs> I think maybe for me that in my experience the universe is a collection of things that have happened before and now and it's the same thing repeating. Then what's the difference between a reality and a fantasy? It's your filter. It's yeah. it's each and every one of us at this table have a certain filter. I have no filter. <laughs> <laughs> I just, anything goes, anything goes. But, That's true. Well, you know it's that. It's a strong okay. cigarette you are. Yeah. That's what happens, you know. No, but you see, if we only view things through a filter, if it's impossible to look at things objectively, then what's the difference between a true reality and a fiction? I just think it's a repetition of the things that we're just learning. It's just a learning curve. That's what that means to me, maybe. And then see what you do in the future with it. People live in denial. Right. They're so they're denying mm. the fantasy of what they think should be reality? Here's... here's Sorry, I'm getting a little convoluted here. If you no. want reality, you have to be objective about your subjectivity. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. That's reality. But how do you get there? That's really tricky. You have to be aware of the level of uh, your awareness. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, the, the only sure. difference is between parties living in the moment versus being the moment. Kind of reminds me of the notion of deja vu. Just yeah. in that sort of feeling of, you know, you're walking down the street, it's a certain temperature, it's a certain time of day, and you're thinking, I've I felt this before. I felt this exact feeling before and I can't even pinpoint it down. We are all time element. That's how we function. All it is in the air, telepathic bits of information interacting and nobody's in control. Well, wow, right. what kind of God is this? This is amazing. <laughs> I think it's because we're in the future from our past right now. But what about a world in which there is no such thing as magic? Is there such a world as no such thing as magic? Yes, and we are living in it. Wouldn't someone then maybe say those things that are not necessarily explainable 
those being the things that are magical. Like you had said, we don't live in a, we live in a world that, without magic. But maybe magic are the things that we have yet to understand. Excuse me. Or maybe everything is actually magical <coughs> in the Excuse first place. Excuse me. Have you ever heard about the M theory? The what theory? M. M, M. theory. I have not. Okay, well, that's beyond the U theory, which is unknown theory, string theory, and so on. The M theory stands for magic. <laughs> 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 or, or mother. You cannot go back, you cannot go to the future. You just in a transition. Keep a transition. Or uh, there are a few metrics uh, yes. and some other M. Did you just make that up? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's in yeah. my book. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. I know it's your house, but. <laughs> but if you explain yeah. everything by magic, then you've explained nothing. No, maybe you don't mm. want to explain. Is this what you were trying to say? That in the past, well, I'm the future past. So right now is going to be the past in the future. Yeah. What we're doing right now and in the future will the future. be past. It's, and it's also, we're, our, we're in the future from our past. Is that what it means? <laughs> we can also say that what's happening right at this very moment is also going to be happening in the future because we're shooting it all. Has anybody ever read The Last Unicorn or seen yeah. the movie? That makes me think about the witch. There's a carnival witch who discovers, what she, this witch does is she picks up old creatures on the side of the road like an old lion. She puts a spell on it that makes it look like a manticore or like a little old snake and makes it look like a hydra. And peasants look at the illusions and they think they're seeing these things. And then she picks up a real unicorn that's sleeping on the side of the road. But people can't see unicorns anymore because mm. there's no more magic in human consciousness. So she, she has to put a, the same spell on the unicorn to make it look like a unicorn so it has two horns and one is real and one is false and people are looking at a unicorn but only because they see the, the false horn. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. And I'm not even drinking. <laughs> what is that? Why are you whoa? whoa? Well, because I had to think about it. First it made me think of a devil and then I, I kind of didn't get the concept because I'm probably one of those people who can't see what the witch wanted you to see, so she did this, because I'm one of those people that's not that deep, so I kind of a what you see is what you get. It's like, is it a unicorn or not? I don't know. It is. Can you really explain that? It's a real unicorn. Okay. But what this witch's shtick is that she takes just ordinary animals, so she might as well have found a horse. And she wants people to see the unicorn, but she's like, I still got to put the spell on it because nobody's going to know it's a unicorn because people can't see magic anymore. Because they couldn't see it for the beauty it they, was, they even as see. it was, so they had to make it like yeah. it was something it wasn't so that they would accept it. Yeah, so like uh, in this book, like I should probably have explained, humans have lost the ability to, to tell the difference between a horse and a unicorn. So there are unicorns maybe everywhere. So basically they're saying people aren't, we're not that deep, we're just living in the moment, especially in a busy world. And I do agree with you that we don't go deep, we're just pretty, I'll speak for myself, we're pretty superficial living in the moment, Paul. But there has to be some kind of show business to make people realize they're looking at a genuine article Spin sometimes. It. it has not to be just, spun. Yeah. It needs a PR. The spun. unicorn needs well, a PR. <laughs> I, I, I hear a description of entertainment or politics. I don't hear a description of real life, uh, if you're agreeing mm -hmm. on that, to that statement. But I want magic. I want there to be magic. Otherwise, it's... I don't... The reality I see is not the reality I like or the reality I want. That's why I'm in show business, because I want magic. I want fantasy. I'd rather live in a fantasy world than in the real world that we're living in, because that I really can't take. So I love the unicorn. I am the future past. Like in, in the future, I'm going to think back on this. Like I'm also in the past just as much as I am in, in the future. So what I'm doing right now will in the future be in the past. Yeah. The key is to embrace that entire timeline. The key is to embrace all of the moments and see them all as equally powerful. So when I wake up in the morning, if I've got two choices ahead of me, and I say I'm going to either take this one or I'm going to take this one, I can give a gift to future me and say, oh, future me will really like this one. <laughs> and I'll put it in here. And then later on in the day, 
because I'm very forgetful, I'll, oh, thank you, past me. That was a, <laughs> that was a really amazing thing you've just done because I know I will forget. And so the gift to future me is to set things up so that future me will succeed. It seems that we can create our own unicorns or that we want to create our fantasy. And a fantasy to someone may not be the fantasy to someone else, or it all depends on your own imagination or what you're trying to perceive or what you're looking for. You can see the fantasy in it and you accept it as reality. Then what's emotion. the difference between a reality and a fantasy? I grabbed neutral nature. I felt, I saw that there and I thought, okay, that seems like a... Neutral nature. Neutral nature. Neutral uh, nature. So we've gone from magic and realism oh, and oh, realistic illusion to right. neutral, ma neutral nature, which I have been explained is a place of just being. That nature exists. Nature does its own thing. We're all nature. Self-creation. Self-creation. And so now we're on a neutral plane as nature. And that means that in a weird way then, everything is neutral at all times. Exactly. Because I am future me. I'm past me, I'm future me, I'm all of them at the same time. And embracing that and being grateful to future me, being grateful to past me, knowing that me right now is still a permutation of all of those, that we're all on this line, but that line, we can occupy that whole line all at the same time and try and embrace that line all at the same time. But the ultimate reason for me doing it is to bring you to a state of neutrality, to the natural forces, which is neutral, bring you to that so you will feel rejuvenated. The word at covenant is interconnected for a humanity, the human race, to understand our beingness and how we are connected, if you wish, God. I'm in a constant state of, of, of trying to experience right now mm -hmm. beyond like there's always like this intention way far ahead of me that I've been trained to like you know, move towards, but like when I, heard, when I heard it, I thought of like, we are the, like the, the, you can live in a space where you are the shadow of the, some future intention. Every nanosecond, as soon as you start to think, you are separating yourself actually from totality in the best possible way. And you, you always, you, you talk like this, Edmund, but I come from a sur survivalist background, the way I, I was raised and like street stuff and just survive. My brain doesn't go that deep and I like to think about the lovely things you say, but I have a survivalist attitude and a survivalist brain and a survivalist body. And so it's hard for me to think that pleasantly about life. I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't think it's possible to live in the moment. I think it's impossible because I think that every moment that we live in is a reflection of everything that we did and everything that we're going to do. And I think that's part of the reason people meditate. Maybe they don't even realize that. It's to sort of try and find what it feels like to be in the moment. It's not very easy because there's always a where that you're going and a place that you've been. And so the moment is, is really difficult. And I think that might be part of the attraction to television because that forces you to pay attention in the moment right there and then to the plot line, to the story, to the dialogue and not be able. But if we left ourselves alone in a room with nothing, just bare walls, where would we be? We talk about why can't people see the way you see things and, right. and being neutral. And most people are almost like animals scrounging around for nuts, looking just to survive. And not they don't almost have like, time. we are animals, yeah. let's face it. Right. All, you want to understand yourself, watch the animal kingdom. You will understand yourself perfectly with one exception. The animal kingdom is there just like 
has been all along. Humanity, we need to understand that, that we are the last link in the chain of creation. But maybe so, that's why it's just called a moment, because all you can do is have moments like that. Like when you go to the park and you're with your dogs or something and you just for a second look at the sun, like I had a moment out there looking at the balcony. I don't think it's possible to be constantly in a state of nowism, I agree, but I also feel that definitely you can have moments where you can forget yourself and sometimes seeing movies and stuff is a way to forget. That's a very interesting image that you bring up because I don't know much about animal psychology. I don't really know what they do or whether or not they find ways to do this, but we, at least I think of animals as trying to preserve their own kind or, or their own species and their own little communities. But human beings, um, even though we're all generally human beings, we tend to like to destroy one another, which is interesting. And I wonder what it is about our history, about our habitat that makes us as creatures want to kill creatures like ourselves. In our culture, we place the prime is on thinking. And even kids, we say, what do you want? And we, we're not letting them grow the emotions first. So we didn't, we're, we're like skipping a level. So instead of just like feeling our dreams, like you were saying, like you were feeling the dream, and it has to do with thought, but it's feeling, because dream is really like feeling, I think. That's what it's like, raw feelings. Because it's, 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 it's provoking your thoughts, because you're not paying attention to your emotions. So it's provoking you. Not, it, not when you understand the mechanism. It will not wait, but that's how many people in our society no, that's are functioning right. on that. That's why we are here. And that's why, exactly. We are here to learn a new view or a new window to the world. Yes. And that's your eyes yeah. and okay. your perception. I kind of think of it like your brain's like a computer and it's just sort of like running that's a few of the That's exactly it. The whole universe works in exactly the same fashion, and that's what the scientific community is searching for. The God particle, they said they found it. They did not find it in their head. They found it in the machine. Mm -hmm. Mm. But it's in their head. So we got every, every person has a large hadron collider in their brain. And so you're talking about instinct. Instinct, what the definition of instinct, I will give you mine, is the combination of total information you have within your system in a fraction of a second. And that's what the animal can then experience all the time. We think we are the thinkers, forget it. It's not your thought, don't, don't take credit for it because it's haphazard anyway, it's chaotic. You don't know where it's coming from. So don't call it your thought. You might uh, take a credit for your feelings, that is yours. <laughs> Edwin, what do you mean that your thoughts aren't I'm yours? Sorry? What do you mean about thoughts, that they're not yours? Uh, your thought is not yours. Where is it coming from? From your nervous system and but computation the, the brain? You see, you don't experience your thought. You experience your feeling, but not your thought. I don't yeah. understand why you're distinguishing between th thinking and feeling. Everything you've said about th thinking, it seems to me, could also be applied to your feeling. I agree. Thinking is a flash of the dark, right? Like a flash, all of a sudden I had this thought and came and gone, as we said. Well, I can get very upset at something. I can get extremely angry. And within 10 minutes, I cannot be angry anymore. That's a shot in the dark too. But a thought that I have has the potential of staying with me a lot longer. And the emotion of, that comes from that thought kind of can stick to that thought, but the thought doesn't go away faster than the emotion. For example, if I, if I lose a bet, I'm gambling, I lose a bet, now I'm really upset that I lost that money, and I'm gonna be upset that I lost that money until I stop thinking about it. Once I stop thinking about losing the money, now why am I upset? I have no reason to be upset because I don't have something giving me that reason. Well, if only it were that easy. But the reality is that you weren't upset about losing the bet in the first place. You were upset because you're having troubles with your wife, because this is the only way that you find enjoyment, spending some of your money, seeing it grow, seeing it collapse. You keep doing it every week because you think it's gonna save you from your own self-pity. Yeah, so, and then it upsets you when you lose. <laughs> Right. That a hundred bucks, but are we fighting? 
One of my favorite quotes by T.S. Eliot is, in a minute there is time for visions and revisions which a minute will reverse. And it's everything can happen right now, but at the same time it could, it could all change. And it's being in tune with that constant fluctuation of the change and adapting to it and understanding the responsibility of the time that you make your own time. And you are the time, you know, you are, you are time, and you're, it's all about how you use it and what you're doing with it. When James Brown said everything is on the one, yep. it put it in perspective for me. There's days when I wake up and I feel like I woke up on the one and everything that like happens is I feel like I'm in the rhythm of life in, in a way that where it's actually almost like just being in line with my intentions and everything, every step of the way down the line that day is like the magic of this realm. I've experienced. But what I'm trying to say is that we think that we know what's making us upset, but in reality there are so many things that are contributing to our feelings at any given moment that it doesn't, just because they're, we're experiencing it at the moment does not necessarily mean that we are experiencing it because of the moment. So, but are, are, are then thoughts and feelings interconnected? Are they separated? Are they... Well, that's a deep... Fucking yep. philosophical that debate. Is what we're here for. Know.